we are just going to go ahead and continue on with the news of today. It is the first day of OTA, so very exciting. You know, our uh, our boys are out there working out a little bit, doing a little bit of uh, doing a little bit of on field work. No pads, no tackling, nothing. Just uh, getting getting their feet wet for the upcoming season. So, this video we're going to talk a little bit about Ernest Jones and Tutu Atwell. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, Ernest Jones has changed his jersey number. To 53. How exciting. So uh he as you know, Ernest Jones, uh a rookie was a rookie last year. Very promising. I'm a big fan of his. He seems like he has the has a good head on his shoulders and he seems very talented. And I think he's gonna be a good linebacker for us. And he was number fifty last year, and he went ahead and changed it to fifty-three which was his number at South Carolina when he was in college. And he wasn't 53 last year because that was previously worn by Justin Lawler, who is now a member of the Tennessee Titans, which is a bit of a bummer for me because I was a fan of Justin Lawler. But is what it is. We can't keep everybody, so we move on. And look at Ernest in number 53. Okay. Looking good. I like it. I like it. As a rookie, he played 15 games, made 7 starts, uh, recorded 61 tackles, 1 sack, 1 tackle for a loss, and 2 interceptions, standing out as a 3rd round rookie. He also had a sack and 7 tackles in the Super Bowl, breaking up 1 pass as well. And Ernest Jones was all over the place in that Super Bowl. He played so well. I am so proud of him for a rookie to come in there. And play as well as he did. I'm very, uh, I'm very excited to see what Ernest can bring uh, next this this upcoming season. He will definitely play better, I believe. Um, that and the fact he has Bobby Wagner next to him. So very excited to see our linebacker position core, which for the longest time was a weakness on this team, and in one off season. It potentially, knock knock on air, potentially could turn into a strength. Very, very excited. Very, very excited. I'm a big fan of the linebacker position. So I want I want our linebackers to be strong. And I'm 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 getting the feeling they might be. So Ernest, 53, and uh, I believe Bobby's 54. So that's gonna be interesting. 53, 54. That's kind of cool. You know, that's kind of cool. But uh, let's move on to go ahead to 2 2 Atwell. And Sean says the book isn't written on 2 2 Atwell. He's looked really good so far. Okay, let's go ahead and get into it. Most LA Rams uh, fans have set their expectation for 2 2 Atwell on the lower side this year. And you can go ahead and add me to that list. Um, I will be more than happy to admit if I'm wrong, but you know I, I don't have anything against Tutu. He seems like a nice a nice guy. It's just um, wasn't very impressed, and unfortunately, I wanted Creed Humphrey, as y'all know, um, the center from Oklahoma, which I think would have solidified our line. But you know, that that's in the past. I'm not gonna not gonna keep complaining about it, but. Not expecting a whole lot from Tutu. Sorry. But after an underwhelming rookie season in which he caught zero passes and only played 10 offensive snaps, the former second-round pick failed to impress in year one. Heading into 2022, he's still buried on the depth chart behind Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson, and Van Jefferson. But his coach isn't giving up on him yet. I would assume not. He was a second-round pick, so he's got to make it work. When asked about the younger player who could step up next season, Sean told the media he had been impressed with Atwell and the offseason program. And he's returning from a shoulder injury that ended his rookie year early. Okay, let's go ahead and see what Sean has to say. I think that's to be determined. 
McVay said of who might take on bigger roles. I've been really encouraged with guys who were able to step up last year and play significant roles. But when you look at it, Tutu Atwell's a guy that got injured. I think he's really good this offseason. I think he's looked really good this offseason, pardon me, uh, program up to this point. By no means will Atwell be handed a role on offense. He'll have to earn it because the Rams have great depth at wide receiver. And they still want to bring back Odell Beckham Jr. Yes. Come on back, Odell. All right? <laughs> Don't get mad at me for clowning on you a little earlier. All right? It's all in good fun. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. You know you want to. Come on back. Come on back. But McVay isn't going to simply stick Atwell on the bench without attempting to manufacture opportunities for him. Atwell was a big part of the Rams' attempt to find a deep threat last offseason. And he could still be that guy after it didn't work out with Deshaun Jackson in 2021. See, I, just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. McVay, however, is still high on him and isn't closing the book on him yet. Uh, Sean continues here. I still believe Tutu can be that guy. And Deshaun did some really good things for us. I didn't do a good enough job of getting him involved as much as he could have been, but by no means is the book written on Tutu Atwell. He had a shoulder injury. He's looked really good. He's done a great job of responding the right way. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. You know, I'm not gonna, you know, I, I understand it was just his first year, but you know, I'm not going to give up on 2-2 uh, per se. I'm just not expecting a whole lot out of him. Is what it is, 2-2. Van Jefferson naturally, naturally became the Rams' deep threat last season, leading the team with an average of 16 yards per catch. He was Matthew Stafford's go-to target on shots down the field, which resulted in a bunch of big plays. That is true. Van Jefferson... Van Jefferson was the deep guy a lot of the times this past season, and he played so well. You know, I, I, I like Van Jefferson. You know, he's a Florida product, a Gator, former Gator. Uh, a lot of my friends personally that I hang out and drink with are big Gator fans, and they can't get enough of Van Jefferson. They're all uh, One guy in particular is always asking me about how he's doing and everything, and, you know, I tell him he, he's looking good. Van's been good for us. He's kind of, he's kind of like that. The reserve wide receiver. He doesn't get a whole lot of attention because obviously we got Cooper Cup. You know we had Robert Woods who was team captain, and Odell Beckham Jr. was the big splash, and they were all the big and Deshaun Jackson, and they were all super talented. And Van kind of just really didn't get a whole lot of attention, and but I think he's held up well. And as long as Van has continued to work hard, I think Van, I, I think we can see some, expect some good things out of Van this year. I really do. But continuing on with 2 2, Atwell might be the fastest offensive player the Rams have, though after running 4.42 4.42 in the 40 yard dash last year, that type of speed can take the top off of defense and stretch the field vertically. If he can get a better grasp of playing wide receiver, and contribute in other ways. Yeah, he is fast. Uh, Tutu did look pretty fast in preseason. McVay joined Rams Wire via Zoom last week, thanks to his partnership with Campbell's Chunky Soup. Look at that. With the two sides teaming up to help those suffering from the war in Ukraine, McVay and Campbell's are making a donation of $50,000 to the American Red Cross in support of humanitarian efforts in Ukraine, a cause that's very important to McVeigh and his fiance, who was in fact from Ukraine. Okay, okay, okay. Well, so you know, Tutu. It's just here's the thing about Tutu. It's almost not fair because I, I will admit I'm still I'm really not that salty anymore about not picking up. Creed Humphrey, I I'm really not. 
but I was pretty salty when it happened that he was there on the table for us. Uh, you know, it turned out he was a Pro Bowl player, uh, you know, an All-Pro player, and we went ahead and picked Tutu Atwell instead. And Tutu, the big concern is he's fast. Yeah, he is. But he's also short for NFL wide receivers. You know, that these football players are big. Okay. I'm not trying to be disrespectful to two, okay? I'm not. I'm just I'm just keeping it real here. He's on the shorter side. And you have to. Yeah, he's fast, but the defensive backs are fast too. And you gotta think if Matthew airs the football up in the air. You know, that's going to give the defenders time to catch up to him. And it's going to come down to a situation where Tutu might have to win some jump balls. And I'm just not very confident that he can win jump balls. You know, I, I just don't know if he, he's able to do that with most cornerbacks. And uh, another issue is durability. He's not very big. And... uh he already had an injury last year, okay? I, I don't quite remember how he got that shoulder injury, but I remember him being rocked, like being... He got hit pretty good a few times last year, if y'all remember. Like, he, he, got, he got... Like, dudes were laying the smack down on him, and, and he already has been injured in his first season, okay? I'm not writing off Tutu Atwell. I'm not. And if he comes out and he is a a good kind of role player, I don't. He's obviously not going to be a starter. But if he can be a good role player, establish himself on offense, and prove them, himself to be a valuable player, I'll get on this mic and I'll and I'll admit when I'm wrong. I will. I was wrong about Brian Allen. Though I still have issues with him, and I still think we could do better, but at the end of the day, I was wrong about his performance. He performed much better than I thought, and uh, you know, what can I say? What what can I say? He made me eat crow, and perhaps Tutu Atwell can do the same. The I just, as of right now, in phase one. First day of OTAs, I just don't see it. I'm sorry. I just don't see it. If he proves me wrong, I'll admit it. But at this point right now, I'm not expecting a whole lot from Tutu. So, Tutu, I hope you've taken this opportunity to study your playbook. And my advice to you is... Come in there um, with a chip on your shoulder. Hopefully you've studied all the plays so you don't need to waste any time, you know, studying the playbook and um, um, or anything like that. Hopefully you've been caught up to speed. And so all you need to do now is perform on the field. You don't need to learn or memorize any more plays because you've already done that this past offseason, I would hope, while you were injured. And... Uh, Go ahead and show the coaches that you can provide a valuable service to this team. I'll be watching, and I'll be rooting for you. I will. I'll be rooting for you. And what can I say? Good luck. All right? Good luck. But that's going to be it for now, guys. I will catch you guys on the next one. And as always, first day of OTAs, baby. Go Rams.